Hey guys, Chris here again, coming at you with another knife review. Dudes, check it. Ganzo. Outdoor folding knives, item number G710. Product of China. Yep, bringing you another Chinese knife. And this one is one that was just on my radar about a month and a half ago, it really came on. Um, actually, two months ago now. Uh, I saw Mr. J. Davis 882 uh, doing a cut test with this knife. Kind of looked at it. All right, let me check it out. Man, that's a decent looking knife. Great price point too. Get to that later. Give you the specs on this blade. First off, we're looking at an overall length of 8.27 inches. A blade that is 3.54 inches. Closed length of 4.61 the lock mechanism is the axis lock people are like man I, I've seen this knife before it's not like isn't that a bench made ah almost a bench made not really it's not even actually uh, marketed as a bench made which is good because if it was marketed as a bench made or as a 950 rift as it's exactly mimicked after, then a lot of people would really, really hate this knife. I held off judgment until after I got the knife and got to test it. Uh, some people don't like Chinese knives, uh, especially ones that uh, are clones of other knives. You know, it just kind of sticks in their craw a little bit. I get it. I'm not going to lie. I do get it. But, dudes, give this knife a chance. Uh, while it does mimic the 950 Rift, almost identically, as far as the blade shape, which is a reverse tanto with an unsharpened swedge with the axis lock and the milled G10 pattern, that is just like the 950 Rift. Traction pattern... On this G10, it's fairly medium, maybe a little bit high. Where it's cut out, oh man, that sucker grips. Check it out. Good looking knife. First up, blade steel. We'll start at this end and work our way this way. Blade steel. It's a 440C. Uh, I don't have any problem with 440C. I have had plenty of experience with it. It's always treated me good. Fairly high corrosion resistance. Uh, holds an edge. Uh, easy to sharpen. Uh, kind of one of the first steels that was commonly accepted as a good knife steel. Before all the super steels and the S30V and the... Uh, heck, even really before a 154CM was really widely used... Um, it was one of the first ones that was commonly accepted as a good knife steel. And I'm glad to see it represented here and represented well. The weight on this knife is the one big kicker. And I'm going to go ahead and get to it. 5.6 ounces. Out of box. This box right here. Out of this box, 5.6 ounces. And that is primarily because of the non-milled steel liners. Those things are solid. Kind of. <laughs> they were. But. 5.6 ounces is really heavy. Uh, I had my buddies pick it up, carry it at work. You know, I let it, I, I carry you know, a couple knives on me. And uh, I, I'll bring one to work and I'll be like, hey. Do me a favor, carry this around, you know, use it today if you feel like it. And then at the end of the shift, I, I get it back from you and you, know, you tell me what you think of it. Um, as long as, the whole goal, just don't drop it and break it, you know. Or if you do, bring it to me immediately and let me let me check it out. Uh, because I want to see where it broke, what the weak points were. Uh, if it breaks, so what it breaks, man. Um, sometimes knives will break it. And if it's not going to break... If it didn't break with them, it would have broken with me. Either way, it's broken. 
So, they carried it, and they hated it. It's heavy. Man, this knife is awesome, but it's heavy. Uh, it's just, it's it's kind of big for what it is. Uh, and that's to be an everyday carry pocket knife. 5.6 ounces is too heavy. Uh, it does rock the access lock. Made popular by Benchmade Knives. This one is buttery smooth. I mean, it does help that when I took it down, I did polish the blade where it meets the washers a little bit with some thousand grit. But man, this thing was already smooth. I'm not going to lie. It was already really awesome. I just kind of wanted to see if I can make it any smoother. I did. Not much, but I did. Man, that's great. Also, the detent on this thing is not that good, though. Tell you why. Boom. Pops right out. Can I shake it out? Yeah. Just shaking it will come out. Uh, carrying it. If I'm carrying it in my pocket, will it shake out? Not really. I mean, that's pretty, that's heavy bouncing. There we go. Finally got it to pop out. But other than that, the detent's not the strongest, but I'm not expecting it to be, to be honest with you. Um, like I said, the handles are made of G G10. It's a milled G10. Let's get a close-up on that. Very aggressive texturing. Which makes this knife very nice to grip. There is... A little bit of jimping, which is recessed. Um, you know, it's whatever. Take it or leave it. it. It doesn't provide a ton of extra, but hey, it does. It does lock my thumb right then and there. You know, when I need it to. The overall traction plan on the exterior of these handles is really awesome, though. Brings us to clip. The clip on this knife. It just. I don't hate it. <laughs> I do like the fact that it is black anodized. So it won't wear out as bad. You can see I'm starting to get a little wear there. It won't wear as bad as some of the Spyderco. Uh, like the Delica painted clip. The the painted clip on the Delica. Uh, you can already see on mine. It's started to wear out. Uh, this one. It's actually holding its color fairly well. And I've carried this one a lot more. Uh, the hardware, I want to say it's hardened hardware, but I don't think it is. If it is, this one screw was not hardened. Yep, it stripped right out. I took every other screw out, <laughs> except for this one, and when I got to that one, it stripped. When I took this knife apart. Dude, check out that blade centering while we're here. But dude, that pissed me off. Yeah, you can see I cut a slot in it and uh, stuck a flat head right on in there. Took it out because I wanted to get this knife apart. Um, not just to check out what kind of washers we're running because I'm getting such a smooth opening, smooth deployment on that. I'm running, they're running Teflon washers in here. Uh, that is, that's amazing. Uh, most knives that I see that have Teflon washers, they're not that smooth. Uh, so, thoroughly impressed by that. Um, I thought about initially replacing them with Fons for, uh, bronze phosphor washings. Phosphor bronze, yeah, phosphor bronze washings. Washers, the yeah. can't talk tonight. Uh, but then I decided, why this thing is so, so smooth right now, why would I mess with it? Uh, so I'm not. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to leave it as is. Uh, now back to the weight issue. You can see. Let me uh let me light this sucker up a little bit. You can see how much steel I took out there. I mean I took out a good sizable chunk of steel. And that's not even, you know, that much, to be honest with you. So how much weight did I decrease? This knife, bye. Let's bring in the scale. Boom. Five 
5.05 ounces. I took half an, like 0.55 ounces out of this. A little over half an ounce. A little over half an ounce out of this knife. And I passed it on to the friends. Had them pick it up. Man, this knife feels a lot lighter, you know? That half an ounce does make a difference. A lot of people are like, what's half an ounce? Well, when you're wearing slacks like I wear all day long, uh, half an ounce really definitely noticeable. Uh, jeans is not as, all, is not as noticeable, um, but I wear slacks all day long. And something like that, a pocket knife weighs on your pants a lot differently when you wear slacks. You'll notice it. Definitely, you will notice it. So, my advice to you, if you have a Ganzo G710, is, and you're, oh man, I like that knife, but it's heavy. Mill out the liners as much as you can. And you saw mine were square. The reason they're square is because I used an air compressor cutoff wheel. Do not try to use drill bits. I ruined a cobalt unibit um, by trying to mill it out. <laughs> they are not joking when they say hardened steel liners. Those suckers were hard as a rock. I could not uh, bust it open for anything. Um, speaking of hardness, the blade. I forgot to tell y'all. 58 to 60 Rockwell hardness. Decent sharpening ability. So, take it for what you will. I tell you what, I know that the hardness of the liners is much harder than that because couldn't bust them open um i ended up had to take the cutoff wheel and then had to go back through with a dremel tool cutoff wheel and clean up the edges and then i took a dremel sander and sanded the fine parts down and got it back to a finished look but this knife now is that half an ounce made a world of difference. I will suck it up for that half an ounce, for the for the ounce more that I than I typically like to carry to have a blade that is this cool on me. Uh it just looks good. Um I after getting this and playing with it, I kind of want to get a 950 rift. Uh if you if you were considering a 950 rift, spend 20 bucks, get this knife first, play with it, and if you love it, like I do, get a 950 Rift. But if you get it and you're like, ah, well, I thought I was going to like it, but then I don't like the access lock, and it's not like it's a world of difference, uh, you gain um, a little more weight with this knife, but for the most part, <laughs> I've handled a bunch of 950 Rifts. I would take this knife over them because it's smoother, in my opinion. Um, those phosphor bronze washers in the 950 are not quite as smooth as this. Yeah, that's my mileage. Don't start blasting me saying I'm crazy. Um, that's just the ones that I felt. So, what are what else would I be looking for if I'm looking for this knife? What other knives could I like say? Well, Chris, I, I like that knife. But do you have anything else that's kind of around that same price point, which is $20? $20. Hold up. What do you get for $20? Well, first of all, you get a really awesome knife in 440C. I'm sorry. That's not enough. I want more. You want more? Boom. We're going to throw in a pocket clip or a pocket sheet with a belt clip. We're going to push this sucker on down in here. Retention on the sheath. Not bad, actually. I have not carried this sheath. It's For me, it's hokey. Um, it's like they tried to do something that was really cool. And, yeah, hey, let's give them something with it. Dude, for me, take the money you took from making the sheath and put it into milling out the damn liners. Seriously. Like, if you... Got rid of the sheath and milled out my liners, I'd be happy. I'd be much happier than I am with the sheath. The sheath is not bad. You know, hey, if you don't want to carry it in your pocket or clip to your pants, 
You can always throw it on a belt loop and I'm sure it's got great retention. It's a Cordura sheath. Feels like almost like a neoprene material right there. It's not though. Um, the Velcro, not bad. It's not super strong, but it's not bad either. Um, but hey, for 20 bucks you get this set up. 20 bucks. Where else are you going to beat that? You're not going to beat it. Um, you can come close. And I, when I say that, I'm going to bring in some competitive offerings. Just toss that aside. <laughs> well, I tossed a little far. Now, in the ballpark, and everyone's got one, Spiderco Tenacious. Just got done with a review on this one. Traction plan, eh, not quite as not quite as good on the scales. Jumping is much better though. Blade. Well, let's see. The blade on this one's 3.38. Blade on this one, 3.5. I said this one could be pressed into a tactical roll. Definitely think this one can be pressed into a tactical roll if need be. Um, Self-defense is always a consideration whenever I look at knives. Um, granted, it's a very long shot possibility. And I'm not suggesting anybody go out and get in uh, a scuffle with a knife because you will lose in the court of law. Let me just go ahead and say that. You'll lose. Um, but... I'm just throwing it out there as a tactical blade. Yes, it can be used. What else can we get? Well, let's see. This is $35. This is $20. Oh, bump the camera there. This is $20, $35. And that's on a good day. That's $20. Ever present, always awesome. Kershaw drone. <laughs> Real quick, the weight on this knife. 4.15 which after my mill out job 5.05 uh, almost a full ounce heavier is it worth it aesthetically maybe Kershaw drone 3.45 ounces uh, about an ounce and a half heavier going with this option considering weight Gerber Paraframe. 2.5 ounces. Awesome knife. But not really. 15 to 20 dollar price range. I'm going with this one. All day long. 15 to 20 dollars. Not bad. I know what this steel is. I got a review coming on this soon. But I would definitely take the Ganzo. Having said that. I think if you don't get this knife, you will be sorely missing out on a great opportunity. Yes, it's Chinese produced. I know some people aren't fans of that. But take a long shot on what I think is a really good knife. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know the deal. Post them in the comments box. PM me if you feel the need to. Uh, other than that, y'all have a good day.